Basketball is one of the most popular sports in the world, and the NBA offers the highest and most exciting level of play. After being around for more than seven decades, a great deal of lore and legend has grown up around the NBA, which has led to a number of misconceptions. Here are some false facts about the NBA you always thought were true. Major Distractions Fans sitting behind the opponent's basket scream, shout, and wave their arms or objects to psych out free throw shooters. It's a fun ritual, but it doesn't really do any good. Neuroscientist Daniel Engbert told the New York Times, Fans might think they're doing something by crazily waving their thundersticks, but to the players, it's all just a sea of visual white noise. But at least it's still fun. Take two of these, smack them together. Kobe Bryant was always a Laker. In a league where free agents jump from team to team in the hopes of landing the most lucrative shoe contract, Kobe Bryant was a rare throwback, playing his entire 20-year career with the Los Angeles Lakers. But while it's true he never suited up for another team, he was actually a member of the Charlotte Hornets for a very brief time. In 1996, it was the Hornets who selected Bryant with the 13th pick in the draft before turning around and immediately trading him to the Lakers. With the 13th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School. End of a dynasty. The 90s era Chicago Bulls reached legendary status when they three-peated, winning three titles in a row, twice. Led by Michael Jordan, the Bulls won it all from 1991 to 1993, and from 1996 to 1998. But then, before the 1999 season started, Jordan re-retired and Bulls fans still ponder what might have been if he had continued playing. However, statistics indicate 1998 was likely the end of the era either way. After all, Jordan did return for the Washington Wizards in 2001 and delivered the lowest points per game of his career. Scottie Pippen was also on the downswing, with each year successively worse until his retirement in 2004. And Dennis Rodman only played 35 games after Jordan's retirement. With an aging core, what the Bulls needed to keep going was strong young players, but they didn't have them. The 1998-99 Bulls had rookies like Corey Benjamin, Corey Carr, Cornell David, and Charles Jones. None of them played more than four seasons in the NBA or amassed a lifetime points per game average above 5.5. In short, their time was up either way. Sam Bowie versus Michael Jordan. On paper, it looks like one of the dumbest decisions in the history of professional sports. In the 1984 NBA draft, the Portland Trail Blazers had the number two pick and picked center Sam Bowie rather than shooting guard Michael Jordan who went with the next pick to the Chicago Bulls. Portland selects Sam Bowie, University of Kentucky. Bowie's promising career was derailed by injuries, while Jordan went on to become someone who many regarded as the best player in league history. But did the Trail Blazers actually make a mistake? Not only did they need a center, they already had a promising young shooting guard by the name of Clyde Drexler. Drexler, like Jordan, was a member of the 1992 Olympic Dream Team and is a member of the Hall of Fame. And after the Blazers acquired center Kevin Duckworth to replace Bowie in the lineup, Drexler led the team to the 1990 NBA Finals, a year before Jordan managed to make it. Hindsight may be 2020, but in this case, it's also wrong. Jay-Z owns the Brooklyn Nets. It seems like Jay-Z has everything. Mad flow. Platinum Records, millions of dollars, Beyonce. He even owns the Brooklyn Nets. Except that's one of the few things Jay-Z actually doesn't have. He may be an extremely wealthy musician and entrepreneur, but professional sports franchises are too rich even for his blood. At one point, Jay-Z owned just 1 15th of 1% of the Nets, for which his buy-in was reportedly a relatively paltry $1 million. Jay-Z sold his share in 2013, and while he no longer owns a piece of the team, he does have a piece of the place where it plays. The Brooklyn Nets take the court at Barclays Center, of which Jay-Z owns one-fifth of 1%. Disney Magic The Orlando Magic hit the court in 1989, the first major American pro sports franchise in the Orlando area, a place which is famous worldwide as the home of Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. But the Magic weren't actually named for Disney. Nope. 
In the mid-1980s, Orlando businessman Jim Hewitt and ex-Philadelphia 76ers GM Pat Williams were looking to drum up support for a possible franchise. So they got the Orlando Sentinel to hold a contest to name the team. The finalists from over 4,000 entries were the Tropics, the Juice, the Heat, and the Magic. Before the naming committee met to pick a winner, William's daughter, Karen, who was seven years old at the time, came to Orlando for a visit and told her dad that she liked Orlando because it was like magic. Williams passed this anecdote on to the committee, and the rest is NBA history. Sorry, Mickey. The flu game. With the 1997 finals tied at two between the Chicago Bulls and Utah Jazz, Game 5 was crucial. Jordan came through leading all scorers with 38 points in the win, despite telling reporters that he was really tired and very weak after suffering from dehydration and difficulty breathing. Jordan was visibly ill throughout the game, and with symptoms pointing to the flu, the performance has gone down in league history as the flu game. But Tim Grover, Jordan's personal trainer at the time, blames another culprit, claiming Jordan was actually poisoned. Well, maybe. According to Grover, Jordan had a pizza delivered at 2 a.m. the night before. Suspiciously, it was delivered by five guys rather than the usual one. Only Jordan ate the pizza. And he became immediately sick, curled up in the fetal position all night. Whether or not he was intentionally poisoned, or just had some bad pizza, or was suffering from something else, like altitude sickness, one thing everyone agrees on is that Jordan didn't have the flu. It's all about desire. You just gotta come out here and do what you gotta do. We wanted it real bad, you know, and, and me as a leader, I had to come out and do my best. 100 points. On March 2nd, 1962, the Philadelphia Warriors hosted the New York Knicks in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and beat them 169 to 147. Wilt Chamberlain led all scorers with a record-setting 100 points. It certainly seems like an impressive feat, but was it really? The game wasn't particularly competitive, as the Warriors were an elite playoff team and the Knicks were bottom dwellers. Once the Warriors realized Chamberlain had a chance at setting the scoring record, they began feeding him the ball on nearly every possession, leading to Chamberlain taking an insane 63 shots, in addition to an equally ridiculous 32 free throw attempts. And neither team played any defense, with the teams combining for a ridiculous 316 points in what amounted to more of an exhibition game than a true sporting event. Sorry, Wilt. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love, too.